So is there going to be a mass exodus from college football coaching in the near future from these high-level, high-paid college coaches? Kirby Smart does not think so. Uh, that's what he told the Making Touchdown Club the other day. Uh, he says, I don't have coaches pl- complaining, saying they want to get out of the profession. Yeah, he's right. I mean, <laughs> what are these guys going to go do? Play coach in the NFL for, you know, six, five million dollars a year? You're not going to get that as, you know, wide receivers coach for, um, you know, Kansas City, James Franklin. That's not going to happen. You know, so that there's a lot of responsibility that goes on with coaching these, these running these programs, really more than, than coaching is running these programs. And th- no matter who they are, um, they're probably pretty good at it. They just may not be as be- better than their rivals. I mean, you look at Ryan Day, James Franklin. Those guys have not won national championships, and they're at schools where you probably should, certainly at Ohio State. But this is all coming about because of Nick Saban leaving and then Chip Kelly leaving UCLA uh, to go coach at Ohio State. And then um, Sean, um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten his last name at Georgia State, going back to South Carolina to be the tight ends coach. Look, I don't know why he went back to South Carolina. I don't know. Um, as it relates to Chip Kelly leaving UCLA, there's an explanation for that. I mean, he just is not recreating the magic at UCLA that he did at Oregon. So the clock was ticking. He probably wanted to get out anyway, and so he did. Um and I think that, you know, this is all because Nick left and then those two guys left, but mainly because of Nick. And if you're Kirby Smart and you are looking around saying, you know, who who's in the spotlight now? Well, it's you. And, and it's going to be like that for a while. He is, um, you know, he is the face of the sport now. Now, he's not like Nick Saban as it relates to being the face of the sport. I mean, Nick never, that never left for him. Uh, And now that he's gone, he'll still be around doing college game day and, you know, all that. But it's just not the same because he's not in Alabama. You had two very, um, you had a mixture of two big things at once, which was Nick and Alabama. Um, Any of those singularly are going to be a big deal. Like Ryan Day, if he were coaching at Oklahoma State, people wouldn't care. They care because he's at Ohio State. Nobody knew who Ryan Day was in 2014. They just didn't know who he was. Nick, I mean, he had already won at LSU and all this stuff. But back to the point about coaches leaving. There's two things involved here at minimum. Number one is ego. Number two is the money. And these coaches are getting paid so well. Um, They really are. And you compare it to what they were getting paid, you know, six years ago. And it's a tremendous amount of money now versus what it once was. And it was a tremendous amount of money then. But it's just getting to be, you know, Kirby essentially makes about a million dollars a month. You know, that's that's a lot of cash. That's a lot of cash. You can go, you know, you can go to Ruby Tuesdays a lot on that. So that's... That's plenty of money. Now, is it worth it? See, I don't know if it's worth it. And that that may be what changes in the future. It may be that people that are in coaching say, you know what, this is great. I have my own kingdom. But is a million dollars a month worth dealing with everything that I have to deal with in the new world of college football? Nick decided it was not. His, His wife said to him, why are we doing this? which is probably once your wife is asking you that question, you're in real trouble. Um, So I think for the the future of college football, coaching is going to change, but it's changed all the time. Now, let me go back and explain this this story to y'all. Mark Richt was hired on Christmas, uh, the day after Christmas, 2000. In the year 2000, he was at Georgia for 15 years. And in that time, the league went from a regional power being better than the ACC and probably being at least the best conference in the country to being clearly the best league in the country. It wasn't close, and they were winning national championships every single season. When Mark got there in the year 2000, 
The last team to win the national championship at uh, in the SEC was Tennessee in 98, the Gators in, in 96, and then before that was 92. Before that, it was Georgia in 1980. After Mark got there, LSU won it in 03, and then the Gators in 6, LSU in 7, Gators in 8, Bama in 9, 10 was Auburn, 11 was Bama, 12 was Bama, 13 was Florida State, 14 was Ohio State, 15 Bama, 16 Clemson, 17 Bama, 18 Clemson, 19 LSU, Bama, Georgia, Georgia. That's what happened in the SEC. In the 20 years after Mark got there, the SEC dominated the sport in ways that it was saying it would when he got there. Georgia had a rivalry with Georgia Tech. That's gone. And, and and in terms of, I mean, like Tech had won three games in a row. Could you imagine that right now? Could you imagine a Georgia coach surviving losing to Georgia Tech three years in a row? We No, you can't because every time that happens in history, that coach has been fired. Jim Donnan and I think Griffin before that. So it just, it just does, the best way to get your ass fired as the head coach at Georgia is to lose to Georgia Tech three years in a row, period. It's it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to lose to Tech ever in football. But three years in a row? So, um, you know, and you look at Brent Key at Tech. You know, the challenges at Tech right now are vastly different than they were in nineteen ninety in the 1990s. Vastly different. Georgia Tech is never going to win the National Championship again. That's just not going to happen. They narrowly won it in 1990. And then you look at what, you know, happened – with the jackets from 1991 on out, you know, you take away, uh, you take away uh, George O'Leary. That's been a tough run for them. That's been a tough run for them. And it's been a tough run for tech generally speaking, but like Brent key is making, I don't know, $4 million a year, three and a half million dollars a year doing, um, doing a job he'd be doing anyway. Um, he would be coaching football. He wouldn't be running the program, but he'd be coaching football. I don't think we're going to see a mass exodus of coaches. I think we could see an exodus of older coaches. But, like, it's probably time for Mac Brown. Like, it's far be it for me to say what he should and should not do, but it ain't working the way it should be at North Carolina. You know, at some point, Dabo's going to leave. He's not old, but he's just not comfortable in this world anymore. And and that's, you know, he's going to, he's going to, you know, go fight you know, windmills about it and that that's fine and scream at clouds, but he's just not comfortable right now in, in the world of college football as it is. And, and that's, that's his prerogative. Doesn't mean he's right, but that's his prerogative. Um, you know, I don't know. Like James Franklin's always going to coach in college football. That's, I mean, him, they go to the NFL. People know he's, you know, that's just not going to work. He could be an assistant or a position coach. These guys, you know, Shane Beamer, being the head coach of an NFL football franchise. I mean, I just don't think that's ever going to happen because A, I don't think he's interested in that. And then B, what is, you know, what 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 are these guys bringing? What expertise does Shane Beamer, for instance, bring that, that would surpass what Pete Carroll and Nick Saban and Steve Spurrier had? So, I don't think we're in a position now where college football needs to really watch. Well, we're going to have a brain drain at, at, at head coach. It doesn't seem like it to me, um, but the, the sport is changing and has changed. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the sport changing necessarily. But uh, what, what, what you don't want, like you see college basketball right now, we're in the middle of March Madness. And, you know, there's no Coach K, there's no Dean Smith, there's no Roy Williams. There's no um, doesn't see, there's no Cal anymore right now either, and the sport's doing just fine. You know, the sport is being really really well watched. You know, is women's basketball in college being really well watched because of Dawn Stanley and Ken Mulkey, or because of Caitlin Clark, Clark, or just because of all of those things? And the sport's getting better. You know, you look at NASCAR. Um, NASCAR's made a comeback whether people want to admit it or not i don't know but nascar is doing well there's no dale earnhardt's not around dale Earnhardt jr's not around so why a lot of it's just is the product good and right now college football is is as good a product as it's maybe ever been because it's a national sport you know it's no longer just a regional game between that's one thing that gary stoke and i talked about probably off the record but 
you know, college football is no longer just, hey, it's, you know, Georgia and Clemson, this game matters a ton because this is a huge regional matchup. No, man, now it's Clemson, Ohio State, or Georgia, Michigan, or, you know, Georgia's going to open with UCLA next year. Um, those are national games, and that's what happens to the sport. And it's, I think it's better. Now, there are still issues. There are still issues. But that's what that's that's why I think you're not going to see any coaches leave anytime soon, because, you know, first of all, someone like Kirby. I don't think he's accomplished what he wants to accomplish at Georgia yet, uh, and then B, and this is one reason I think you know Spurrier kind of held on too long. I wouldn't say Nick held on too long. Whenever you're winning your league and you're going to the Rose Bowl your final year, I wouldn't say you held on too long, but. It's just everything's changing and, and, and the world always changes. It's just what it is.